Good day guys and girls. So I know I said in the past that I wasn't going to do a whole bunch of IKEA videos or IKEA kitchen cabinet videos because a lot of it's been covered already on YouTube and the internet. But as you can see, the videos I've been posting, there is not one YouTube video on the net about them. There is no information on the net about them. So here we are again. We're trying to install this deco strip, as they call it. This one happens to be the Encoping, Encoping, however you say that. So the dilemma that we're getting into is I followed the instructions, at least I followed the instructions the way that I interpreted them, and it's not gonna work. And I say it's not gonna work because you can see that there's this, this hard reveal where there's no reveals anywhere else in this kitchen. So it just, it doesn't look right. And excuse my shady and shoddy camera skills. That's not why you folks are here for the fancy stuff. You're here for the information. So what we did first is we consulted our end panels. The end panels have to be on in order to get your correct measurements between everything. So that's where we started. We started with the instruction manual that came with these end panels. We opened it up and it says, oh, if you've got the Enco Ping, the fancy deco strip, right? You got the fancy strip, guess what? You want to turn to page seven, okay? So we turn to page seven. Or number seven, I should say. It's not page seven. It's uh, number seven, page seven, sorry. So it says you're going to want to line the top up flush, the bottom's going to overhang, and your width's going to be perfect. And I'll put up uh, a better picture of these just so you can see. So that's what we did, and that's exactly what we've got here. You've got everything lined up flush at the top so that we can extend that deco strip past and then miter the corner and return it. But I started looking around on how to install this Enco Ping. Not one video on YouTube, you can check it out. Not one video, okay, so I go back to the IKEA website. The IKEA website has this really nice picture showing the deco strip coming to here, past this and returning, and this piece here being cut. So you actually have to cut this end panel to be the same height as the uh, cabinets themselves, the section cabinets. So I'll throw a picture in there right now. So as you can see, that's what it's supposed to look like. But if you go back to the instructions, right? This is the only reference. Hello, Atticus. Atticus would like to play fetch. And there he goes. Sorry, folks, we needed a little bit of a kitty break. So that's the only part that they show that kind of looks like what we need to do, kind of. But it makes no mention about cutting the end panels down or anything like that. So again, this is where we were at. So we decided to install it this way and it's not looking the way that it should. So we're gonna show you at least how I think and how the uh, IKEA website thinks that you should be installing this. Again, there's nothing wrong with this. This is, I have not cut down this panel to length or to height. Perfectly fits this panel, yeah, but it just is not gonna be right. It just doesn't look right. So we're gonna show you how to do that here shortly. Stay tuned. Okay guys and girls, so what we've done is we've actually ripped and cut down this end panel. I had to rip it down because I've got the, um, backsplash tile that's on there. So it's adding about a quarter of an inch. So that's approximately what I ripped off of that panel. 
rip meaning cutting up and along this part right here, the long part. And I cut it down to the height of the cabinet. The height of the cabinet is 40 and a 16th inch. So that's what I did. I cut it down, throw yourself a couple of clamps up in there, use the supplied screws. You can change them out to white screws after if you really want to, but those are the supplied screws. Screwed everything in. We'll probably add another two in that middle piece of that gable end just to kind of solidify everything. But we're now ready to start doing our measurements for our ankle ping deco strips. Okay guys and girls, so now it's time to start measuring. So what I've done is I've laid out a line on here three quarters of an inch. Okay, this three quarters of an inch represents the distance that you need to leave so that you get the right gap. I'm trying to hold this up and make it straight so that you can see. So that's what that line represents. So if you take your measuring tape, measure the width of these, okay? They're just shy of three quarters of an inch, but then you've got that little bumper on the bottom that you need to account for. So that's where the three quarters of an inch comes from. And I've drawn this line just for a demonstration because what you're gonna do is you're gonna measure back. And when you measure back, you can see that that dimension is an inch and a half. So what we're gonna have to do, or at least what I think is the best, me best method to do this, is to make a line underneath here, inch and a half, then that way we can take all of our measurements. We're gonna know exactly where the corners are and it's gonna be probably the simplest way of doing it. Now, there's a bunch of ways that you can do this. You can take yourself one of these small uh, squares here. You can take a pencil. Just like I'm showing you here. And what you do is you take your pencil and your square and all you do is you run it underneath and it runs a nice inch and a half line or whatever the dimension is that you need. You can also use a scrap of wood, this being a two by four, because its nominal dimension is now inch and a half. But I will say, if you're using a two by four, make sure you're using it on this side, on the flat, because as you can see, it's rounded. And if you're trying to hold a pencil here, it's no good. So you gotta hold it on this flat side, run it right up with the edge of your countertop or your cabinet, scribe it. You can also simply just take a tape measure, hold it up under here, measure back inch and a half. You can use this as your straight edge now and just simply draw the line underneath. You can use a level, whatever's easiest for you. But the, the point is, is that we're trying to get this marking done underneath here so that we know exactly what our measurements are gonna be. So as you can see, we've got our lines under here. And what we've done is we've done an intersection right here where it's gonna meet. I know it looks a little sloppy, but that's the way it goes sometimes. So we're gonna be able to get all of our measurements now. Our measurement is going to be to the short edge. Okay, so when you're doing your miter cuts, remember that it's to the short edge. Okay guys and girls, so we have the first piece installed. I like to clamp one end so that you can adjust this end. I don't know if you can see it really well, but I like to leave it just proud. It's better that than having it inset too much. It just doesn't look right. So that's where that inch and a half measurement comes from. I clamp this end again so I can adjust it. And what I've been doing is using a pin nailer. Pin nailer is 23 gauge. I'm not sponsoring by, by rigid or anything, but um, this way, nice fine pins that you can't see underneath there. If you follow the instructions, they want you to actually screw down through the cabinet into this. So now you've got screws that are in there or you'd screw up from underneath. You're gonna see those screws. It's not really how I wanna do it. 
You can use any nailer you want. You're probably not gonna see it under there. I just used 23 gauge because you can't see them as well. And I did not put that foam gasket on here because even with the foam gasket, you could still see some light transferring through. That's the whole point of that gasket. So what we're gonna do after is we're actually gonna take caulking. We're gonna caulk that gap. It's the best way to do it. You don't have to mess around with putting um, felt strip with uh, self self adhesive backing on there. It takes a lot of that stress out. So again, first piece in, now we can measure our second piece, get it installed, we're good to go. So as you can see, we've got the first piece in and the first return. So we've got a completed corner, we've got the nice reveal. So what I did is I actually changed my measurement. I just scooched it back so it was to this edge right here. Any of that difference is underneath here. You can't see it anymore. So it doesn't really matter that this is three quarters of an inch thick and this is only half an inch thick. The difference is only gonna be seen underneath. No one's ever gonna see that. Again, we didn't put that felt strip on here because we're gonna go back and caulk that anyways. I, to me, it's, it's kind of a waste of time to put that in because it's not perfect anyways. So if you're looking for perfection, caulking is gonna be the way. So we're gonna continue this for the top side. The top side is gonna be more difficult because we're not gonna be able to make those reference measurements on the cabinet so that we can follow them. So what I would suggest is where you've got a cabinet like this, where you've got the duplication at the top, write those measurements down. They're gonna be invaluable, especially if you're doing this on multiple days. You can go back, make yourself a little sketch and get all those measurements and it'll make things a lot easier. So here's where things are going to get a little tricky. It's even going to get tricky to film this, so hopefully it works out okay. What, uh, what I alluded to before is just the difficulty that's going to be involved in getting this top deco strip in there because you don't have the ability to lay out anything, mark anything, and, and measure to those marks. So you basically have to do it a couple of different ways, but I found the best way for me anyways was to make up these little jigs and cut them just like this so that you can do inside and outside corners. We'll do a better video close up of this later. But So what you do is you put your piece in this way where you want it to finish out. It's got your angle cut on it already. Put your other one up over here. I know it's going to be hard to see, but you just got to take my word for it. And it's hard on this piece here to kind of demonstrate because it's got the uh, filler piece in here. So that piece wants to fall over, but basically you take your tape measure and you measure between these pieces now, and that'll give you the exact measurement. So here's a close up of that jig I was talking about. Cut it just like this. And this way you can measure for inside corners or outside corners. You can take your tape measure, you can actually hook on or measure right to these points, go back, measure to your other one. Basically, you're gonna have this one down at the other end here. And that way you can get your measurement between here and here. And it takes a little bit of the guesswork out of it, in my opinion. It's just the best way that I've found so as you can see, we're almost complete on installing the deco strip on this section of cabinets here. Now, one tip is where you have an area like this over the fridge, I like to install both those pieces, those end pieces first, then you just take one simple measurement in between and it completes the cut no problem. Now you'll also see that I've got some wedges in here and the reason for that is because I've got this uh, filler piece in here there's actually nothing on top so those pieces wanted to fall in which made it difficult to put those uh, those those reference pieces in there in order to get my measurements. So what I've done is just taken a little bit of white caulking, applied that on the inside there, and then wedged 
those shims in place and they hold them in place until everything is cured and we can go ahead and install this front piece just like we did the rest which was with 23 gauge pin nails now you can use 18 gauge 16 gauge whatever you want to use you can use screws you can use uh, finished nails that you put in by hand it's up to you I just found that the uh, the 23 gauge pin nails don't really show makes for a nice clean finish so now as you can see we're getting into some harder angles and a little bit more difficult cuts but if you follow the scribe marks that you've made underneath here it's going to be no problem trust in your marks measure twice cut once and as you can see everything's going to fit just perfect and in this case we'll be able to duplicate those same measurements for the top for at least most of these cabinets here so that's going to be really convenient write those marks down or you can do both cuts at once if you're not confident you can do the bottom get everything all fit up nice mark those measurements down somewhere and then you can repeat them uh, that way you know everything's going to be a hundred percent but what i wanted to bring to your attention is and i probably mentioned this already in the video and i'm going to mention it again is ikea is not giving you the information that you need so as you can see here standard 90 degree corner equals 245 degree cut so that's correct but when you get to this corner here they're asking you to do a 67 and a half degree cut now i don't know what kind of table saws and miter boxes they've got over in sweden but uh, they don't exist over here in north america the cut that you're actually going to want to do is two 22 and a half degree cuts and if you've got a miter saw there's going to be detents or a place where it'll actually lock in at that measurement so there'll be standards 22 and a half 31.6 and your 45 degree cuts most miter saws will only go up to about 50 degrees i have a little bit better miter saw it goes up to about 60 degrees but you will not find one that goes up to 67 and a half so if you take your template with your two 22 and a half degree cuts place it in there you're going to see that everything's going to work out perfect so trust in your measurements use the ikea measure measurements and um, degree angles and instructions with a grain of salt it might work for you you'll have to make a custom miter box for that 67 and a half degree maybe that works for you but go with the 22 and a half it'll simplify things write your measurements down so you can repeat them if you have to for the top it'll make everything go by much much smoother so to make some of these blind cuts up top a little bit easier cut yourself some scraps of wood I already showed you the scraps with the uh, 22 and a half degree angle on it so that you can try out the corners before you actually cut them as you can see in the upper right hand corner there we've got one of these blocks these template pieces placed in here now I can place my tape measure here on the short side and I can measure here to the short side so short to short will give me a measurement you just simply measure go down measure twice cut once it makes things a lot easier instead of guessing and uh, it'll also tell you too if something's out, out of square a little bit those uh, blocks will tell you if they're not quite lining up in the corner then you know that there's something either wrong with your cabinets or with the actual saw setup so it'll help you troubleshoot a lot of those things before you actually cut the pieces because as you can see on this one here we're looking at about say 55 inches for that piece we only want to cut that one once and Atticus would love to say hello again hello Atticus yeah it was time for another kitty break so work smarter not harder use these templates and these cutoff pieces to help you out with your measurements it'll save you a lot of frustration in the end all right guys and girls so as you can see we're at the finish line we're ready to put the final touches on the ikea echo ping deco strip and as you can see 
we're still getting some light penetration coming through here even though we've put on this uh, foam strip that IKEA has sent with the uh, with the unit itself and uh, it's doing a good job as you can see like it's fairly thick but the problem is is that you've got these sections of cabinet here that come down further than the bottom part of the cabinet and it's just it's doing its best to seal against there but it's just not working and like we said at the beginning of the video it's kind of more hassle than it's worth so literally all we're going to do is we're going to take in this case some white silicone caulking we've cut the gap and cut the tip a little bit big on this one but that's okay it'll work fine no one's ever going to see this back there too, so you can be a little bit sloppy with it. doesn't need to be silicone. It can be painter's caulking. It can be an acrylic caulking, latex caulking. It can be any kind of caulking. You could even do it in black. You could do it in any color you wanted to. You're not going to see it back there. So all we're going to do is we're just going to apply a nice tight bead. Hopefully you're seeing it disappear right before your eyes. And when you can't reach the one side, you come around to the other side. Excuse me, me for getting in the way. Sometimes you kind of have to. And you can remove the stuff off the counter. It will make it a little bit easier. But we're just doing this as a demonstration. As you can see, we just had one little gob of caulking that dripped down there. Simple piece of paper towel in your fingers. All we're going to do is just clean that up. And the nice thing about the caulking as well is that once it cures, it's going to add some stability to that deco strip and it's going to keep it from wanting to uh, warp and separate, especially on that back side. So I hope you found this video and the series of videos on IKEA specific items interesting again. I don't like to duplicate content that's out there. That's why we're doing this right now. This channel exists to help the common homeowner, the common property owner with things that I think that pretty much anybody is capable of with maybe a couple specialized tools and you know a little bit of knowledge. That's why we're here. If you're looking for videos that have got super high quality uh, video transfers and, and shifts and cool 3d effects well this isn't the place if you're looking for a place that has good information that you can't find anywhere else on the internet especially on youtube this is the place you never know unless you bear we'll see you on the next one